Now, the idea of this panel is not to give you heavy data. You've already gone through most of the data throughout the day. We have five cases. The question is same in all five cases. The choices are same. Many of these choices may be correct. The idea is just to put in perspective, when you see one or two points in a patient, in patient, then you might like to choose one over the other. It's not comparison. It is just to get our mind straight over such a data-heavy day which we had today. So let's straight away go to cases. 30-year-old man, grade one fatty liver on ultrasound. He's got family history of Nash cirrhosis. BMI is 32, waist circumference 105, comes with pain in right upper quadrant abdomen, cardiac work is found to be normal. Enzymes are mildly raised, 46 SGOT, 50 SGPT, HbA1c is borderline 6.1, fasting blood sugar again borderline 106, platelets are normal, BP is fine, cholesterols are more or less okay with the LDL of 126, TG is slightly high, LSM is only 6, and CAP shows 278. Now that's the audience poll. I, uh, who, all of us who are here, I would uh, urge you to vote. So just lifestyle management, lifestyle plus vitamin E. Lifestyle will form the backbone everywhere. Lifestyle seroglitazar, lifestyle oka, or GLP-1 agonist. Which one of these, so as I said, most, many of these options can be exercised. What do you think is the most appropriate in this case? Voting please. <laughs> So most of us think lifestyle management. Akash, uh, what is your thought on this? This is a guy who doesn't have uh, any fibrosis, but enzymes are raised, and there's a family history. Would you like to treat or not? Yeah, I would, I would actually treat this patient. So uh, I think semaglutide will be a good option for this patient. 100, 100 plus kg weight. So, so we have not tried lifestyle modification yet. So with, uh, yeah, so, so I mean. So it, it's, it's, it's actually a touch and go. Like I said, the textbook answer is lifestyle modification. But in real life, I will probably so, put lifestyle modification with semaglutide. I think that's uh, where we stand today. Uh, if you offer only lifestyle modification, you're absolutely right. Because whatever data we have shows that NEFL, without fibrosis, without significant inflammation, has same survival as compared to general population. It is only fibrosis which predicts poor survival or significant inflammation. This patient probably does not have NASH. We don't have a biopsy to confirm that. But only lifestyle modification may be good enough. But most of us will choose to uh, use one of the drugs just to, for the, uh, I would say, uh, weight loss. Yeah. Uh, weight loss, because you can prescribe weight loss with exercise also. We have not tried that. But yes, sorry, weight loss, you can do that. OK, uh, case number two, 50-year-old woman. Diabetic, metformin for five years, reasonably controlled sugars, fasting 117, HbA1c 6.33. BMI is 25, overweight category according to Indian criteria. LDL cholesterol is 150, TG is normal, hypertension on Rx. So all metabolic syndrome components are there. AST, ALT similar to the previous case, 45, 65. Platelet counts are normal, but this is a difference. LSM is 7.5 now. We know 7.58 is round about the cutoff for F2 fibrosis. So we are looking at some fibrosis. And ASCVD risk is moderate. What would you do here? Same question, same choices. Uh, audience poll, please. So most of us will use seroglitazar here. Why not vitamin E? Vitamin E is a good drug to use. It's a, it's a licensed drug. It has been shown to improve <coughs> inflammation in these patients. Data on fibrosis is not there, but even on sero, data on fibrosis is not there. Two points I wanted to make. We are aware about the Pivens trial. Dr. Sanyal did that in 2010, and we have seen the follow-up data also on that. I just wanted to make two points here. One, diabetic NASH vitamin E is safe. So we used to believe that all data is on non-diabetic NASH, but that now we have enough data. We have randomized control trials using vitamin E in diabetic NASH, and results are similar. One third of these patients do respond. Secondly, long-term use of vitamin E. Again, there is validated data that you can use vitamin E for longer than two years without any significant side effects, setting aside all your problems of prostate cancer and other things. So, Kaushal, uh, are you happy with only vitamin E or you want to go to something else? This is an so, almost normal BMI person yeah, so with normal uh, lipid profile. I think in both the cases, I would have used lifestyle plus vitamin E 
or maybe in the first case lifestyle plus saroglitazar but in this case definitely lifestyle plus vitamin e because she is heading towards uh, f2 fibrosis not reach there but maybe in real life practice i would give vitamin probably e. so so the whenever we are looking at fibrosis we would be treating them with nash therapeutic medications of course we'll do lifestyle management of course we'll want to control the blood sugars we want to control other risk factors ldl is 150 you'll give statins also but nash therapeutic drugs come into picture once you start seeing a fibrosis developing in these patients this is the other point which i wanted to clarify here okay third case we have only 10 minutes mind you so 2 minutes per case i am not taking longer than that 62 year old male diplomat diabetic for 25 years detected raised alt ast around 100 that is around 3 times of upper limit of normal nowadays the alt limit which we have he had a recent out of country posting and stopped statins and part of anti diabetic therapy because it was not available in the african country where he was posted so glycolazide was stopped and he continued insulin his weight is 85 bmi is again overweight category he is a smoker all components of metabolic syndrome are there on treatment for diabetes on treatment of hypertension he has a bmi of 28 and dyslipidemia which was controlled on statins but now the ldl is 150 tg is normal has schizophrenia on clozapine aripuzol ultrasound shows severe steatosis and lsm of 10.6 now we are looking at f2 fibrosis definitely maybe f3 fibrosis and he has severe steatosis cap score is 344 same audience poll what would you use here only lifestyle vitamin e or other options can we have the audience poll please i can't see the okay so C sero we are all sold out on sero the only drug which has been shown to reverse fibrosis dr sanyal pointed out is oka the you have f2 f3 fibrosis if you are if your patient can tolerate the medication as of now we have more more evidence for reversal of fibrosis for obeticolic acid compared to either sero or vitamin e GLP-1 agonist. We need more data. Again, the NEGM trial, which we talked about, the fibrosis reversal did not reach significant. This thing. So, I, if I have to choose out one drug for a significant fibrosis patient, and there are no other contraindications, patient is not is is not an obese patient. Dyslipidemia, you use statins for that. So, I'll probably use OCA. But as I told you, all these options are correct. You are you are good using any one of these, but we have to remember what makes you choose one medicine over other. That's the whole idea of this uh, five cases which we are discussing. So, advanced fibrosis, not cirrhosis, OCA. Please also remember that the trial which was carried out in compensated cirrhosis using obeticolic acid, there has been no improvement in primary endpoint. It did not meet the primary endpoint. So, for as of now, in cirrhosis, OCA is contraindicated. Yes, Ashish, please. I I understand that so uh, we are just trying to place each one drug according to the benefits which is offering over the other drug it is not approved but we know how approvals are you can always take a consent and use it but I I'm I'm not asking you to use oka I'm trying to place the drug according to the benefits of that drug so if you have cirrhosis absolutely no question of using obeticolic acid as of now today we may have evidence further later but today F2 F3 fibrosis the reversal is seen in other uh, with oka fourth case 55 year old male fatigue and right upper quadrant pain the usual compl uh, presenting complaint has recently gained 12 kg over last 6 months borderline hypertensive 33 uh, uh, is a bmi 108 is a waist circumference no alcohol not a known diabetic undergoes evaluation and we find that he has possibly signs of cirrhosis here So 105 by 80, HbA1c. So this is a recently detected diabetic. He was not a known diabetic. Now he is detected to have diabetes. Higher uric acid, low platelets. So most likely we are dealing with a compensated cirrhosis with a high BMI. Audience poll, please. Drug of choice. Audience. so the house is divided between sero and glp1 agnist uh, dr uh, dr rai 
what would you do, sir? I BMI 33, cirrhosis, diabetic. Oka or, oh, sorry, GLP-1 or Saro? The audience is confused. I think recent weight gain uh, brings him closer to the GLP-1 agonist to be used in this patient because he needs to control his blood pressure, uh, weight. That is Absolutely. So, so uh, whatever discussions we had throughout the day, the best weight loss with all the medications available is with GLP-1. We have standalone, we, we have data that it can be used even in a non-diabetic patient. This patient has diabetes in addition to being overweight, has cirrhosis. We have data on liraglutide and semaglutide that they are safe in cirrhotics. So why not GLP-1? I would say GLP-1 over a sero here. Since sero, we currently have no data in cirrhosis. So we are talking about cirrhosis. OCA is contraindicated. Sero has no data. OCA, uh, GLP-1 agonist has been shown to have uh, significant uh, weight loss as well as control of diabetes as well as reversal of NASH. So my choice of drug here would be GLP-1 agonist. But Manav, I'm surprised nobody is opting for vitamin E. See, and vitamin E goes in every prescription. No, so <laughs> Maybe your choices are wrong. But no, see, I, I said all choices are correct. You are not wrong in choosing any one of these five. I, this was a disclaimer I gave you that each one of these choices can be correct. I'm just trying to place each drug according to... Which one is good? Which, so with yeah, it, which without one is good? vitamin E? Yeah, with or without vitamin right. E. Each of these choices can have because vitamin E. I think e. among these only vitamin E has a data, although in a retrospective trial, uh, yeah. over long-term use and uh, with good liver-related outcomes. So GLP-1 has data in a prospective in trial, in a GLP randomized controlled trial, in cirrhotics and a long-term outcome. So that's the reason better. So vitamin E can still be used, but GLP-1 but would be a good option here. Do you have experience with the, uh, the, uh, the semiglutide oral? Sir, not me. Because IV drug is difficult to procure. I've used oral, but I have not found very good results, although the number of patients are only a few. So I, I'm not in a position, but the data which is available, and Dr. Sanyal telling us his own experience, it seems to be the wonder drug. I have used on 10 patients by now. In the last six months, you know, it has been giving a wonderful uh, result, except for the nausea, which comes a lot in a few of them. But one problem is that, you know, the whole thing boils down to the cost. Because from 3 to 7 to 14, you know, once you increase, so, there is a significant weight loss, but again, we do not know the end point. If, if you stop it, as Dr. Sanyal was also telling, you again start getting the... Yeah, weight. so, it, it's so uh, that actually goes for every drug we are talking about, as of now in non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, or should I call it MAFLD? I don't know. Last case, last two minutes. 48-year-old gentleman referred for raised AST, ALT, detected during workup for dyspepsia. Diabetic for seven years on OHAs. BMI, again, overweight category, no hypertension. AST, ALT, 150, 150. Albumin normal, platelets normal, viral markers negative, cholesterol, TG, 248, 215 cholesterol, and a LSM of 8.5. Again, you're looking at fibrosis here with significant dyslipidemia, hypertriglyceridemia. All choices are correct. What would you give? <laughs> Audience poll, please. All right, so I thought we should honor the sponsors by giving their drug at the last. <laughs> so, so seroglitazor is what I would use. Uh, panel is open for any See, comments. I think, I think, Manav, I have just one thing. Excellent, you know, point, very clear. But what, what Pasha was telling earlier, like, like in the case, uh, you know, which said uh, severe fibrosis and severe fatty liver, there will be scope of you know, polypharmacy. You know, there will be like you know, more than one drug to have. Like OCA is not very good for steatosis. It's good for fibrosis. So you maybe combine vitamin A and OCA together. Maybe that something you'll have. So combinations are something combination. which we are looking forward to more data. And uh, I think there are exciting days ahead for management of non-alcoholic steatohepatitis in days to come. Thank you all for very patient listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.